So let's start exploring the options I have with my light. There are many studio setups up out there. Uh, the basic one is the three-point light. You can also uh, have something more like a Rembrandt. Uh, many studio setups depend on, on a product and how you want to show the texture or the soft features. The same in a face if you want to show the wrinkles or make the, the features of the face look very soft. I would think the best advice is to check on real life studio setups. So just like in real life, we have uh, soft boxes, spotlights, uh, flaps, uh, reflecting surfaces. You can use the same here. And uh, we are going to try to go over the options here to check it out. Okay, uh, I'm going to actually create a three point light here. So this is going to be my key light. So the way this key light is working, it's uh, pretty much like a softbox, okay? Because I'm not putting any direction. As I said before, to do that and imagine like it's flaps, then I do it here with the directional. So that would make my key light a lot stronger and sharper, okay? Uh, which just like if I would use a diffuse, diffuser in, in real light, that means I would have to also decrease the intensity of my key light. So let's go to what we have. I'm going to put it in two again, and I'm going to take out this direction. And now I want to have also my fill light. Maybe I don't need a fill light because the floor is already quite light and it's reflecting enough. Okay, so let's make the floor a little bit different. Let's make it darker. In which case I actually do need a fill light. So I'm going to create it uh, quite fast here. Okay, so now my key light, my fill light is actually filling some of the shadows here. And uh, I still want to have a rim light in the back. Okay, and now I have uh, my backlight separating it. So what happens if I want my key light to be more directional or, or more sharp? Then as I showed before, I just increase it. Okay, then it's much more contrast, it's a lot more dramatic. Okay, so I have a much more uh, dramatic light if I keep it that way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it soft. Uh, in general, uh, my bike light, I can also make it more directional actually to have a more sharp thing, but you won't see so much the effect because it's a lot more dim. Okay, now I start to see it over there. Probably I want to put it a little bit lower. So really you have to work with your light and check what is it that you want. Actually now in this angle I have a really nice backlit from my key light. So you already know uh, that without the directional this works a lot like a softbox or a diffuse light with the directional increase then it works more like a very uh, harsh spotlight. And uh, you actually have in um, V-Ray a softbox texture. This is down here in the maps. So we can see if we go down here, there's a similar gradient if you have a softbox. And the way now, if I apply this to my um, light, what it's going to do is that it's going to create the same effect a softbox will have with that gradient, okay? You, you can barely see it. Normally, you would have a camera and you wouldn't be moving around uh, when, you, when you create the lights. That actually makes absolutely no sense. I'm just doing it here for the sake of observing our lights. Uh, other uh, options in the softbox, I can uh, have vignettes, I can have this frame. I can say how much is the gradient of the frame changing. I can change the color, of course. Uh, it's, a, it's a procedural texture for me to create a softbox, okay? I can also uh, tell it to have a hotspot. Other things to take into account when you're working with lights is uh, if you have a glossy material, avoid these kind of reflections unless you want them, okay? Uh, if you have a, a material with a lot of texture, then my softbox is not really showing here uh, everything. I actually want uh, a light that is a lot sharper. I have a 
have a lot more of a feeling of what is going on, on there than if it would be too soft. And of course, what you usually would do is then having a particular light for this object, okay? And then a light for the whole scene. So I have, I, I take this one back to being soft. And then I have a smaller version being a lot sharper. So I have a combination of then on diffuse and sharp. Okay, so that I can see the texture and I can see also the overall image well lit. So if you have something like a, a shoe where you have really uh, shiny areas or an, and texture in the fabric, this is how you deal with it. But in general, there's a lot of light uh, in it. Okay, so just, just keep in mind a little bit how the basics are done.